If you know, if you are going through a heart break, you know, having a hard time uh, getting over your breakup, it's normal. You know, a lot of people ask, why does it hurt so much? We talked about that last week. The reason why it hurts so much is because, again, anything that affects us mentally will eventually go to the heart. And what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us, whatever is in the heart will manifest itself through our limbs, our body. So it hurts. You put your all, your hope into something and it's gone. It's over. That's a tough pill to swallow. So it hurts. A lot of us experience a, a, a loss of appetite. A lot of us go through insomnia. We can't sleep. We can't function. A lot of us become confused. You know, we have to restart our life and don't know what to do. I mean, this is normal. This is part of being human. But something that will help us get through it is the fact that Allah tells us in the Quran that he doesn't put a burden on us that we can't bear. There is nothing that we experience in this life, be it heartbreak, be it disappointment. Allah doesn't subject us as humans to anything that we can't handle. We just have to believe in ourselves, believe and know that I can get through it. That's the first step to healing too. I can get through this. I can overcome this. I just have to have faith in myself. And that's the problem. When we go through something like heartbreak, we lose uh, faith in ourself. We got to get that faith and that belief back. Okay. So let me share this with you guys. Let me see if I can work this this way. I like, um, wait, let me put myself back. This was the whole point where I can work this way and keep myself here without going back and forth, disappearing from you guys. Let's see if I can do this. Presentation. Okay. Okay, everybody take a look at this. Inshallah, y'all can see this. Okay, today what I'm going to do is speak about some of the tips, the tips that Islam gives us as to how to uh, heal, you know, our broken heart. What are some things I can do to overcome this? Well, the first thing is you have to allow yourself time to grieve. You have to allow yourself times to grieve. Embrace your feelings embrace those emotions it's okay to be sad it's okay to be angry acknowledge what you're feeling and don't judge yourself for it don't make yourself feel like you're weak because those feelings that you are experiencing those feelings that you are encountering they're part of the healing process, guys. And that's how a lot of us lose it, you know? A lot of us, you know, we wanna, you know, not admit that, oh, well, if I cry, that's a sign of weakness. Now, crying publicly is one thing. Crying privately is something different, you know? You don't want people to see you sweat. You don't want a person to know that they hurt you. So crying publicly, you can avoid. But don't keep those feelings locked up. Let it out. When you're at home by yourself, yell, scream. Throw something. Break a dish if you need to. Let those emotions escape. Let them out. We have to remember Allah tells us that he will never change the condition of a person until we take the steps to change ourselves first. And that's what grief is. It's a process. So you have to allow yourself to go through it, sisters. Don't run away from it. Let it out. 
Because if you don't let it out, it's going to take its toll on your body. It's going to take its toll on your mind. Your health will decline. You'll become mentally incompetent. So do not avoid the emotions. Let it out. And once you let it out, turn to Allah and ask Allah to help you guys. Turn to Allah and ask him to give you the strength to overcome it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? That's what we have to do as women. You know, it hurt. You love that brother. You thought you'd spend the rest of your life with him. But it just didn't work. He hurt you. He disappointed you. He lied to you. He betrayed you. Whatever emotions you are feeling, get it out. In private, in your home, because you don't want the brother to know he got, that he won. You don't want the brother to know that he got the better of you. Cry it out. Scream. Holler. Tell yourself you were stupid if it'll make you feel better. And then turn to Allah and talk to him. What y'all think about that? I know I don't have ifty here, but uh, anybody got something they want to say about that from my Zoom room? What do y'all think agree. about that? I agree with you. Layla, you can't you can't hold that in. It's like holding in some type of poison, you know. Except it's an emotional, and it can it can destroy you. What you have to do to heal is you have to let go and turn to Allah for strength. Yes. Allah know what you're going through, and Allah can can help you. But you got to be willing to take the first step yourself. Let go. Yes. And that's what happened. You know, I'm doing the stories of the female companions to you guys. Subhanallah. Allah. Look what happened. Look what happened to Rukaya, Ready Allahu Anna, the daughter of the prophet and her sister, Um Khutum, when they were married to the sons of Abu Jaha. They thought that this was it. They were going to be married. But on the day of their marriage, their, uh, right after their marriage, they didn't even get a chance to consummate it. Their father, Abu, uh, Abu Jahal, and his wife, they made their sons divorce them and send them back to their father humiliated. Can you imagine how brokenhearted they were? We talked about it. Rukaya was very brokenhearted. So was Um Kutum. They both isolated themselves. That's the first reaction we have when something hurts us, when somebody disappoints us. We want to hide. We want to isolate ourselves from the world. That's okay. Isolate. Go into isolation. But while you're in there, let those emotions out. Don't hold them in. Don't put the smile on when you by yourself. Let it out. Let that anger out. Let that hurt out. Cry. If you got to vomit, vomit. You got to have a BM, BM it out. Whatever. Get it out. SubhanAllah. <laughs> okay. Um, I see. And also, I have a question here. Uh, from Sister uh, Laylee, she said, Sister Layla, my nephew asked me if he can do the Akika back home instead of here in the U.S. And I said, yes, you can. I just want to make sure that I'm not good. Yeah, he can. Exactly. And Akika is uh, something, a ritual, the ritual that we do whenever a woman gives birth to a baby. And uh, yes, they can do it back there. Yeah, he cannot have, have it done there. Plus is the charity that they would get and all that. Yeah, so there's nothing wrong with having the Ahika done back home. Okay. And also we have Sister Jamila. Sister Jamila said, subhanAllah, with letting go of that grief, she said, get yourself a pillow 
Scream into it, cry if you need to, and then talk to Allah. Ask him to remove the pain. Girl, I'm telling y'all, remember the supplication that Um Salama, ready Allahu on her made. There's a supplication the Prophet Muhammad taught us to say when we're going through grief like that. And that supplication is in Allah, in Allah, Rajun. That's all you have to say. That's what I do. When I'm disappointed, if there's a marriage that I want and it doesn't work out, it doesn't happen, but I'm just giving an example. If I had a marriage that I wanted and it didn't work out, in Allah, in Allah, Rajun, and just get it out of my system. Okay? But in Allah, in Allah, Rajun, ask Allah to help you through it. And also, guys, so that's the first step. That's the first step to healing is to allow yourself to grieve. There's also another step too. What's the second step? The second step is just as important as the first. Seek support. Seek help and support from those close to you. This is when you want to surround yourself with supportive friends and family. And if they're not enough, then you need to consider talking to a Muslim therapist. That's the key. It has to be a Muslim. If you're going to seek counseling, seek it from a Muslim counselor who can provide professional advice. Remember, guys, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that the Muslim is like one whole body. If any lamb hurts, the rest of the body feels it. We talk about well or well better, allegiance. We're supposed to have allegiance to our brothers and sisters in faith. This is the time to surround yourself. If you got a friend, say for example, your, your friend is going through a divorce. This is when you sisters want to be there to comfort her, to help her through it. Whenever the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, learned that a Muslim was grieving over something, be it death or going through a breakup, the prophet would cook a pot of soup and send it to them. How many of us do that? You hear that a sister in the community and who's been married for a long time, now all of a sudden her she's going through a divorce. How many of us think to make a pot of chicken noodle soup and send it to her? Oh my God, she'd appreciate that because it lets her know that she's not alone, that somebody actually cares. Because when we're going through a breakup, especially from someone we've been with for a long time, you feel isolated and alone. So we need to take you know, the remedies that our prophet taught us. If a person is going through a hardship in life, cook a pot of soup, send them a pot of chicken and noodle soup if it's somebody close to you or even not close to you. You don't even have to know the sister personally, but you heard, you know, and just send her the soup and say, may this help you through your time. May this help you through your troubled time, sister. So that's the second tip that I have. Surround yourself with other strong Muslims who you can lean on during this process. And again, they should be strong Muslims, not weak ones. Remember, the strong believer is more loved by Allah than the weak one. You don't want to surround yourself with weak Muslims that don't halfway practice the deen, that don't pray, because what's going to happen is your iman is going to be low anyway. So they're going to end up pulling you down into your to not practicing and blaming Allah like they do. So that's the time to seek, you know, company with family and strong Muslims. And that's the time that we can help. Again, how many of you belong to an Islamic community that has a, a welfare committee? Sister Amina Fresno, that's something that y'all can do in your mosque. You're on the board. When you hear that a sister is going through a divorce, you know, send a pot of chicken soup to her. She'd appreciate that. What do you guys think about that?
I never really thought about that sending something to someone at that time, but it, it's just like if you're grieving, grieving a death, you're not thinking about cooking or doing things for yourself or taking care of yourself. You're just sitting there grieving. So something like that, send them some food really is a big help. And I didn't even think about anything like that. Yeah, that's something I keep telling y'all. If I had been a man, I'd be a baddie mom. I'd have a masjid filled with people because I'd be a goody mind, Supana Allah, because I'd be trying to live in accordance to these hadiths, okay? I'd have a health and welfare committee. Who got divorced today? Who's going through an edat? Uh, did anybody send her, send the, the sister a pot of a soup? You know, it's not just for death. Because like Latifa said, a breakup, that hurts. It feels like death. When you're going through a heartache, oh my God, it feels like somebody ripped your heart out. It hurts, your stomach hurts. Oh my God, this is why I don't like love. Let me tell y'all why Layla Nasheba can't handle love. When I love a person, I love them. My past marriages, I love you, I love you down to your last week's underwear. And when you hurt me, when I think that you don't love me, it hurts my stomach. I have a sensitive stomach. I have irritable bowel syndrome. That's the love, that's the broken heart. I can't handle it. It's too much anxiety. I go through irritable bowel syndrome. My stomach hurts. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I got insomnia. Oh, oh I'm sick. I'm, I got GERD. My GERD comes up. Oh my God. Heartache is death, guys. It's like you're dying. You feel like you're dying. So send the person some chicken soup at least. Some chili, you know, that's something that we all need to do. Chicken soup is a comfort food. I can lay up there, it ain't gonna hurt my stomach. It'll help ease my irritable bowel syndrome. I can sit there and eat the chicken noodle soup and cry my heart out. And look at the blessings you're getting because you sent it to me. Any questions we got before we continue on with this? Are there any uh, questions? I have, uh, 